Hi everyone, there's been a lot of talk about the shaded tree lately. Um, there's some discussion going on at Moto user group. And there's more coming. Uh, and we have the old Ryan Drew tutorial. And I just wanted to touch on, on some things that I haven't seen covered. It uh, might be small things, but I think it's uh, worth mentioning as it might increase um, your knowledge about the whole thing and uh, possibly help you ironing out some problems and make you feel like you're in command a little bit more. The first thing I wanted to touch on is how to delete the shader using the keyboard, which can be a bit tricky sometimes. And I'll show you why. First uh, off, we'll uh, select this uh, base material and uh, I'm going to delete it. So I press the delete key on my Mac and it uh, goes away. If I undo that and I press the backspace key, the mesh goes away. So uh, first you have to know that to delete the base material or to delete anything from the shader tree you need to use the delete key. I assume it's the same on the PC but um, I can't be 100% sure, you have to try it out yourself. Anyway, let's bring, the back, uh, bring back the mesh and this time I'm going to simply click in the viewport. And notice that my material still looks selected, but if I use the delete key now, nothing happens. I can try to delete all I want, it's not going to work. And it's, it looks like I could delete this, but I can't, because it's not focused. It's selected, but it's not focused. And you can't actually see that the shader tree is, uh, is focused. And it's not enough to just click in the shader tree it won't help you or even hold the mouse over it or something like that it doesn't work the only way to do it is when you have clicked on something in the shader tree then you know you have focus so now if I press the delete key it goes away just something to be aware of while we're on the topic of using the keyboard in the shader tree I'm going to touch a bit on using the arrow keys in the shader tree First of all, you need to have your shader tree selected or focused and uh, for, in order to do anything useful you need to go and click on some of the layers inside the render node for example. And then you have your up and your down keys. And the up key takes you to the parent. So the up key won't take you anywhere on the render node. But if I, for example, have the side window outer material and I want to go to the parent material whatever it's parented to, I press the up key and it goes to the parent press the up key and go to the render now the down key doesn't do the reverse the down key is only used to open a, a material with sub-materials in it or a, a group so the, the down key would unfold this one and there is no way to unfold it again with using the keyboard. We can move up and down the shader tree uh, using the right and left keys on the keyboard, but they're reversed. So in order to move up, I would use the right key. And actually it only moves uh, inside the current level you're at. So it doesn't move inside a in sub level. So I can use the uh, left key to go down, I can use the right key to go up, but you'll see that it skips the material, go to the next one. This can be a little bit useful, useful sometimes, but it, you need to get used to it as well. Scrolling using the mouse wheel is another interesting phenomena uh, in, um, in the shader tree. So, for example, I can, I can drag in the shader tree using this, but I like to use the scroll wheel. And I can scroll up and down like this with the scroll wheel, but sometimes it won't work. I'm scrolling now. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's not helping. I'm scrolling, scrolling, doesn't work. It seems that it's not generating any mouse events unless I'm over text. So you, you ha need to have your mouse cursor over text in order for it to actually scroll. So I'm sure you've been in a situation where you've been in, in the shader tree and you 
try to scroll and nothing happens and you just feel like you're not in command and uh, now you know why all right so <clears throat> sometimes you get this annoying mess tab when you just want to deal with uh, a material and it's somewhat tricky the situations where it appear and goes away you need to understand that so uh, I click on this material and I have this mesh tab here and I'm currently in item mode and I have this plane selected so that's why the mesh tab is coming up and if I click off the plane the mesh tab goes away now there's a one funny thing here if I go into polygon mode and I'm nothing selected the mesh tab is there I can't get rid of it I can click it doesn't help the only way to get rid of it is to go in, back into item mode and click off that that's why you sometimes see that mesh tab and sometimes you don't see it so now you know why it's there or, or why it's not there so it doesn't surprise you another interesting phenomena with tabs and textures is that if I click on this noise texture which is a procedural texture I get two tabs I get the texture layer and I get the texture locator and if I unfold this noise I can see them I have them both selected so now I now I have opened this one and I click off it and maybe later on I click on it again and just like I did before but now I don't have the the texture locator tab anywhere to be seen so that sometimes confused me but it turns out that when you have you can select it like that and you can use your control key to select only that or both of them but it turns out that when you have this one folded and you click on it it automatically selects the child for you so it's not like that with groups, for example. And this group has material in it, but it doesn't get selected just because I click on the group. So it's special for, uh, for, for this case. So if you see or don't see this texture layer, uh, you know why. One thing that you might have seen but forgotten about, I'm just going to remind you, uh, is that you can, you can see, normally the shader tree is about this wide, but you can you can see what the masks affect by going to right clicking on the word shaded tree and going to viewport settings and change into any of these three small medium or large th thumbnails so if I go to large thumbnails and originally it doesn't look like uh, much it just shows you the plane but if I expand this eventually you will start to see these, um, let me bring it up a bit, these masks here. So each layer group is now showing a mask. And this can be very useful to see what on your, in your scene is affected by a specific material group. OK, 